short-term gains on certain financial assets shall henceforth attract a tax rate of 20 percent, while that on all other financial assets and all non-financial assets shall continue to attract the applicable tax rate. Long-term gains on all financial and non-financial assets, on the other hand, will attract a tax rate of 12.5 percent. This budget came with a lot of changes in capital gains on different asset classes. A notable one was changes in property taxes. The government has lowered the capital gains tax rate on long-term capital gains from 20% to 12.5%. That sounds like a great news, right? But there's a twist here. While the tax rate has been cut, the indexation benefit has been taken away by the government. What is indexation? Indexation adjusts the purchase price of an asset to adjust for inflation, thereby reducing the gains and ultimately the tax liability. Additionally, the finance minister clarified that property value indexed up to 2001 are grandfathered for capital gains. So they have clarified that the removal of indexation benefit will not be applicable to old properties held before 2001, which will continue to see this benefit. That means if you bought property before 2001, 2001 will be the base for cost of acquisition and if after 2001, then actual cost of acquisition will be considered. The short-term capital gains will continue to be taxed at slab rates. These changes will come in effect from 23rd July 2024. Now this boils down to the question, is this good for a home buyer and a seller? Would this debtor home buyers for buying a home for investment purposes? While the government has indicated the effective tax rate will be beneficial for the home buyers, analysis suggests otherwise. 88% of the value of capital gains earned in India, according to our study, comes from people whose returned income is more than 15 lakh rupees. Mm. And 62% comes from those who are above 1 crore of returned income. So this is not a tax which is falling predominantly on, on the, the... No, not at all. Class, uh, and yeah. this is the class of income which Thomas Piketty and others have been writing about all the time. Now, so, at so some point... It then some begs the question, are you looking at a higher rate? Because that's the worry that you've done 12 no, and a half. This is perhaps an odd rate. Is it likely at a to higher rate, to If we were looking at a higher rate, we would have done it. But maybe you're, not it? maybe you're testing waters with 12 and a half. No, and we maybe don't you'll, believe you'll, in testing waters. So is it going to be 12 and a half now for the near term? I mean, for the next few years? There is no intention to revise it from here. I cannot speak for all the you know, future finance ministers and finance secretaries, but I can say as of now, we have no intention of revising this any further. So this move will not impact those buyers who sell a house and reinvest in a new house. As they have an offset on past capital gains from old houses available if they reinvest in new home purchase. If this is done in two years, this is as per Section 54 of the Income Tax Act. But what about those who are investing in assets other than property or not investing the money at all? This is here where it gets very tricky. An analysis by CLS indicates it will impact relatively shorter term investments where market price growth is less than 10%. However, the impact of this new regime would be neutral or marginally beneficial for investments with longer holding period of more than 10 years and where property price has increased by more than 10% per annum. So let's take an example of a house bought at 10 lakh rupees, where under the old tax regime, it will be 20% with indexation and under the new regime, it will be 12.5% without indexation. This is what the analysis throws up. If it is held for more than 5 years and the house price increases by 5%, on sale, a seller will have to pay 754% times more tax versus old regime. In case it rises more than 7.5%, they will have to shell out 52% more. For 10% price rise, 8% more tax will have to be paid. But once price is above 12.5%, taxes will reduce. A similar calculation is done if an asset is held for more than 10 years at different price levels. We can see that as price hikes are in double digits, the seller tends to benefit under the new regime. But does the real estate see more than 10% gains every year? That's not true. The average rise in home prices in top Indian cities is about 20% in the last two years, but that was because of an uptick in real estate cycle. Before that, prices have not seen more than 7 to 8% rise according to Knight Frank. The benefit will come in only if it is more than a 10% price gain for any buyer, which we've not seen in a long time. Knight Frank also adds that only 15 to 20 percent are buying properties for investments, rest is largely used for end use. And double digit returns adjusted for inflation in the real estate space are not possible. Of course, it also depends from case to case and individual calculations would vary, but this is largely how new tax regime on property sales would look like.
Thanks for tuning in to CNBC TV 18 and for more news and updates follow us on all the social media platforms.